Hi, I'm Julia, and my next video topic is going to be effective brushing and combing at home. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is supplies. And the most important supply you're going to need is a slicker brush. So I'm going to show you three, three different types of slicker brush that I use in the shop. And what I'm going to ask of you is to pick a slicker brush that matches the size and coat type of your dog. So this one has really long bristles, medium bristles, short bristles. This one has fairly hard um, pins, medium flex on the pins, and super soft flexible pins. So this one you're going to want to use on doodles, um, poodles, anything with thick, dense, um, and long coat because you're going to need to get deep down to the root and um, prevent any tangles from happening. This is an in-between. I usually use this one on my dog Watson. He doesn't mat all that easily, but he does have some length to his coat and quite a bit of texture to his coat. So this is still going to be effective enough for the in-between. And the fine and soft pin one, I like to use on like Maltese, Yorkies, small dogs with super sensitive skin, a thinner coat, or a short coat that has been shaved but is just starting to get to a length that you want to maintain and make sure no tangles are starting. So that's the three different types. If you are confused about which type to use on your dog and you're a client of mine, just give me a call or text or email and I will get back to you and let you know sort of what harshness and what size of slicker brush you should use on your dog. The next supply you're going to need is a metal comb. Again, just pick a size that is appropriate for your dog. They come in um, teeny tiny all the way up to a 10 inch comb. I use a whole range in the shop, but just pick one that's size appropriate for your dog. I like this one because it has the different um, gaps between the teeth. So it's a 50-50. So half of it has a wider gap between the teeth and half of it has a more narrow gap. And I really like using that, especially for detangling, because you can start with um, the wide on a thicker or a tangled coat and sort of pick away at it and work your way to the more narrow gap between. Um, when you are finished with your brushing and combing and detangling, I would hope that you could get this fine tooth comb through every which part of your dog's body. So that's the end, the end goal here. Something else that is going to help you out along the way is uh, conditioning or dematting spray. I use one on every dog. I don't use the same one on each dog, but as long as you're using one, it'll help protect the coat from damage while you're brushing and combing and um, doing light dematting as well. For stubborn tangles and early on mats, I'm gonna also share these tools with you. You can use them to help with those stubborn areas. I don't normally recommend my clients to use these tools because they do have blades. This is a small set of um, grooming shears and this is called a dematting tool and it has blades also. So use with caution. They can injure your dog if they're used incorrectly and that's why I'm gonna show you in this video how to use these effectively on um, tangles that are starting and light matting. I don't want you to use these on dogs that have fully matted coats all throughout their body. That dog will have to be shaved once grooming shops are back open. So just on small tangles that are starting in non-sensitive areas. So this is Watson and he is my model for today as always. And I'm going to show you on him some different um, techniques and different areas to focus on when you're brushing. So as far as table setup and um, setup in your home, I'm not going to repeat what I said in the other video, in my first nail trimming video. I think it's about two minutes in. I explained the best um, way to set up a 
place for nail trimming and the same thing is going to apply for brushing. The only thing that I might do a little bit differently, another tip is since they could potentially be on the table for a long time or standing up on the ground for a long time, I like to use, this is an anti-fatigue mat, we have those in the grooming salon, but it's basically like a yoga mat, so if you want to put a yoga mat down, and then I'm just putting a comfy surface on top, this is a bath mat, but you can use a towel or anything, just to give them a little extra padding, because we are going to ask them to stand up, and sometimes it takes quite a while to get through an entire dog, depending on their size and coat, so that's another little trick you could add to the table. Other than that, let's have a look at Watson. And so the areas on him that are most prone to matting, there he goes being lazy again. Um, the areas most prone to matting are the ones you can see that have long coat. So he has longer coat on his legs, on his um, skirt here, James calls it a kilt because he's a boy, but it's a skirt, and the long hair on his legs. You can see that they get all piecey and bunched together, and that's what eventually leads to matting if it's not brushed and combed through regularly. On dogs, other dogs that are not um, the same breed as Watson, those are still really common areas that are prone to matting. So legs, chest and between armpits is a terrible area especially for dogs that wear a harness like watson does um undercarriage and belly inside and outside of the legs fronts and backs on watson he has sh uh, fairly short hair on his tail but um lots of dogs shih tzu mixes doodles poodles um lots of breeds have coated tails so long sort of a flag on the tail or just long hair in general so that's another area that you have to pay attention to for dematting and all the mats like to hide right along the underside of the tail in those cases so another area to pay attention to and also on Watson his face his face does get tangly sometimes but he has fairly short hair on his ears and he has really short and upright ears. Dogs with really long hair on their ears or big floppy ears often have tangles right around the leather of their ear. And also when you lift those big floppy ears up right here where the ear meets the, the cheek or face or jawline there, that's a super common area for matting and that is not an area that I'm comfortable dematting or asking you to demat either because it's so sensitive and the skin is so thin there. So that's something, those are the areas that I would preventatively brush and comb diligently before any tangles start so that you aren't having to demat those areas because that can be a huge pain on you and literal pain to the dog if you try and do it after the fact. So um, those are the target areas. And this is the technique that you can use. So I always start just with my slicker brush. I go with the direction of the coat and I do an all over, just really light brush through to let the dog know what we're doing, getting them comfortable with everything. Go right down the leg, kind of come from the inside out. And I'm not getting through any tangles with this. I'm literally just doing a general and very light brush out all over the dog, back of the hawk, bum area. Make sure you don't brush their actual bum because that would be sore. Right down his skirt. I'm holding the um, top of his skin so his skin isn't moving while I'm brushing. I'm just holding his skin tight so um, that there's not much pulling. I'm just doing short light strokes, getting a general brush through all over. And you can see that that in itself will start to separate the coat. Do inside of his legs, I'm brushing lightly in a downwards motion when I lift the leg. 
and then I can lift them up like this. I usually brush the chest downward, but as we approach as nether regions, I, I brush that upwards and away from any of those sensitive areas that you could scrape with the comb or the brush bristles. Okay, so once I've done just a really light all over brush, then I'm going to focus on specific areas. And I like to work my way around the dog, but everyone has a different method. You just want to make sure that you are going to hit every single part of the dog and not forget any certain areas because even forgetting the inside of a leg can cause um, there can be matting in that area and then that's not going to be any fun to deal with. So I'll start back here and I'm going to start on the especially the long areas. I start down at the end at the ends of the hair and I work my way up to the root. Now I'm holding the skin tight everywhere I go because I don't want the skin to be moving around. That's going to cause um, irritation. So the brush is doing the work for me. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm just doing frequent short strokes. I can lift the leg again, keep it in a comfortable position, bent at the knee to get the top of that foot if you push too hard, the bristles are going to go right to the skin and into the toes and the dog will not be comfortable if you do that. So just really lightly. Oh. Now, for his long coat, I like to hold it up so I can see down to the base. I can see where the skin is and I can see what we're working with. So he does have some little tangles starting in here. and. That's why I'm going to start right at the bottom and very lightly, I'm holding up all the hair and I'm very lightly pulling out hair with the brush. All the meantime, I'm detangling those little, little, I don't want to call them mats because they are more just like tangles, but they're starting and they will turn into major matting if you don't do this. So. He's nice and dirty as well. He's got twigs and things stuck in there. So those will come out as I, as I brush. He's been in the river a lot. So if you feel a tangle in there, you can kind of look for it. So you know what you're working with. Is it right up against the skin? Is there, is it a little bit lifted away? This one is just a light tangle and it's not too close to the skin. So I'm comfortable just working it out with the brush. As far as direction you're brushing, I usually, I start with just a general brush of the direction of the coat, the direction it grows, so down. With a curly coated breed or a um, poodle doodle shih tzu, anything, you can comb in different directions because the coat kind of grows outward, not specifically down. So you don't have to follow the way I'm combing Watson's coat. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna go into details about that. Just trust me, if you have a more single coated dog or a Shih Tzu, Maltese, Yorkie, um, most other breeds, just not stripped Westies. <laughs> you can comb in lots of different directions. You can even lift, if you have a long coated doodle, you can lift the coat up this way and brush down along the back while you're lifting. So you can see the roots, see if there's any tangles starting down there. With your stripped Westies, you wanna go with the direction of the coat because it will change the way that the hair grows, but that's a different topic. So, Getting the insides of the legs, I like to just lift the leg and again, keep it comfortable, loose, um, inwards motion, all the way down to the foot on his feet, I can brush up. So I'm getting right down to the toes. Now, 
making sure there's no tangles in there. And the back. So I can hold his foot up and brush back towards his body. And then I can lift him up, get him to stand up, hold with my thumb at the elbow, and I'm kind of pulling the skin out so I can see the area I'm brushing. It's really good to um, be able to see the area you're brushing, just like in toenails, it's good to see the nail you're trimming. And it's just so I can monitor the skin. I can look and see tangles before I accidentally hit them with the comb. Um, and I can see if there's any sort of irritation starting. Brush upwards from there. Okay, let's see that chest. So with the chest, he doesn't have much hair on the front of the chest, lots of dogs do. So it's gonna be the exact same. There you can hold the hair up, brush downwards. He has long hair at the bottom here. So on, on super long hair like that, I'm just holding the base of the hair and combing everything out at the ends first and then working my way up the dog. As you can see, he's not in any sort of discomfort. He's actually falling asleep. <laughs> but um, that's exactly why I do it the way I do because you don't want your dog to be in pain through this process. You want to use a technique that is going to allow them to be comfortable so you can get through the whole dog. So again, holding above where the tangle is. And I'll just do the one side so you can see. To get that armpit area, I'm lifting the leg and very, very light. In the sensitive areas, you want to apply even less pressure as well as the tangled areas. I apply less pressure and more um, rapid, small strokes in lots of different directions if you come up to a tangle, because that will help it get, help your brush get through it. Okay, one more up, good boy. So I'm sort of going back and forth different directions here. coming upwards from his groin area. All right, so one side of his body is generally brushed through. I can't guarantee I'm not gonna use the brush again and that I'm not gonna find a tangle once I get the comb out, but I like to do this as a general um, brush and start to um, demat anything that's really tight down in there. So it's going to be a lot easier once I get the comb out to um, work with this coat now that it's had a brush run through it. I'm going to show you before I bring out the comb, I'm going to show you the inside of his leg and how I reach that area, his back leg. So turn. Let's see if I can do it in a position where you can see. So I lift the opposite leg and I'm brushing, usually the top part, I brush either back or forward or both. Good boy, Watson. Sorry, this is a bit awkward just because I want you to be able to see it, but there. So I got the top and then the bottom right down to the foot, I do that area upwards. Okay, you can see, good boy, you can go back this way. There we go. So you can see I got some coat out and some twigs and things already. And you'll probably see, depending on your dog and breed, you'll probably see some hair in the brush. Then I'm gonna pull out my comb. And 
Same, same thing with Watson. I'm going to comb with the direction of his coat. Um, if you have a long coated dog, you just have to make sure that you're holding the comb flat to the dog's body so it's not um, poking into their skin at all. And I like to just run it through first and see if it stops. If the comb stops anywhere, you'll know there's a tangle and you'll make a mental note of that and be able to work with it. So, oh, it stopped there. So I've made note of where there's a tangle. I'm gonna take my brush. There's a tangle right here near where his armpit is. And so very lightly, I'm going to brush that in lots of different directions. I'm stretching the skin. Don't be afraid, afraid to put your hands on the dog. I'm stretching the skin. I'm moving it so that I have clear visibility of the tangle that I'm brushing out. Okay, if it's a little bit stubborn, it's mostly out, but just to show you, I can grab above the mat. Make sure you're grabbing all the hair that's in the mat. Grab above it and then just lightly pick at it with the wide tooth part of your comb. And then follow through with the narrow part of your comb to make sure it's fully gone. It's not fully gone yet. So back to the beginning. <laughs> Wide tooth. Pick away at it. I think that was it. There it goes. <laughs> and then um, follow with the fine tooth part of your comb. There we go. That was it. All right. Same with the front leg. Same direction really that you did with the, the brush. Go right down off the end of the foot. Often mats will form on the top of the foot sort of between where the split of the toes is. So it's important to get right down to the end. And you're almost searching for mats. Like if I don't feel one, I'll go back and I'll comb a few more times just to make sure there's nothing in there. That's good. The face. Last thing left. I can't fully comb through the entire bottom of him because I haven't, um, I haven't brushed out both sides. But once when you're combing underneath, it's the same thing. That way. Comb in the other direction, start at the base and work your way out to the tips with the comb. If there's a stoppage along the way, stop, bring back your slicker brush, even spray some of the, the dematting spray you have on there and then repeat. The comb or the tail, sorry, he doesn't have much coat on his tail but when you're working on that area with your with your long hair on his tail dog I would suggest backing them up to the edge of the table letting the tail hang over brushing the top brushing out to the sides using your your hand underneath the area you're brushing so you can feel how much pressure you're applying and feel that you're reaching all the way through the coat on the tail and then you're going to lift and come from the base and do very small outward motions and then um, brush that way until you can reach a comb all the way through.
it's the bottom of the tail. You really have to search for those mats because they're deep down in. Um, but that's a really, really common area for tail brushing and backing up your dog to the edge of the table for that part will allow you to get underneath the tail without holding it up in an uncomfortable position for a dog that may not have a tail set that allows their tail to reach way up. Okay. And inside of the leg is the same. It's just combing through, stopping if there's tangles, repeat. So the face. I'm going to use the same slicker brush I used on the body. If you want to switch to a finer, if you've been using this slicker brush, you might want to switch to a smaller, finer one. I, I would have both on hand if you can. If not, just press a lot lighter when you're working on sensitive areas, um, small strokes. And I usually start with just a general brush. Try not to get those ear edges. You can brush away from that by holding it so that you know exactly where it is with your finger. And you're not gonna catch any areas. And then um, brushing away from the eye. So you don't wanna catch, you don't wanna catch the eye with your brush. So it's not their favorite thing in the world, but it's also very important because this is the area where they stick their noses in, if they're anything like Watson, in everything. But at the very least, they stick their noses in their food dish and they often get little um, dirt and tangles in there. Very lightly picking through. And I am going in multiple directions because I do have, I can see some tangles. You might not be able to see it from that distance, but there are a few little tangles starting just right around his muzzle. I'm brushing away. Yeah, it's okay. Brushing away from his nose, brushing away from his eyes, any area that I don't want to catch with the brush. I'm just being very mindful of. And the chin is often an area that gets quite matted, so. There, now I'm following up with the wide, the wide part of the comb. Well, anytime it gets caught, you stop right away before you yank. And same thing applies, so I can hold above the little tangle and then use, I'll probably use a fine tooth because it's really tiny and just, Remove that. It might have been a twig, that one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the ears. Be very, very careful and, and brush very, very lightly when you're working on the ears. Ear tips is something that, one of those sensitive areas. So, Again, you're not gonna want to actually brush the leather. You'll probably brush all the hair up to the leather and then just double check through with your comb and make sure there's no tangles starting right at the leather. Most common for floppy dogs is right around that tip. Um, so make sure you're, you're feeling where the edge of the ear is and you're combing right down, down through that and making sure there's no tangles. So you can kind of see the difference now. I'll show you this side. This is the side I've brushed and combed through. And that's the other one. Hey, stand up, show the people. There we go. Okay, there it is. And I think he knows we're nearing the end of the video, so we may as well do the celebration again. And then I will finish brushing him after. Good boy, Watson. There we go. So before I finish up, 
I'm just going to show you how to use the dematting tools. Again, use very carefully. They are sharp, they have blades, and they can cause um, injury if they're not used correctly. So Watson doesn't have any big coat, um, big mats in his coat, but I'm gonna show you examples of where you might find mats that are de dematable <laughs> um, anywhere on your dog's body, which is, it's pretty uncommon to get matting on the body, but if your dog has a long coat, um, it is possible for sure. So you can use a dematting tool on that part. You can use it on the outsides of the legs. I would be very, very careful about using it on the insides of the legs, groin, armpits, around the ears and face, probably not unless it's like one of those mats that looks like a dreadlock that's really thin and is just hanging out of your dog. Um, but it's basically for those tangles that the brush is not going to cut through. And all you do with this tool, so let's say his mat was on the inside of his leg here. So you want to hold the skin tight. You want to locate the mat so you're spreading the hair out. You see the mat, you see the front and back, all ends of the mat, so you know where it is. You're going to hold the skin right above where the mat is, and you're going to very lightly pick, probably only two or three strokes, into the end of the mat. So not down where it starts at the skin, you're just going to, because you're holding up the skin, so you're just going to pick through the end a couple times. If you don't have one of these, you can hold underneath the mat and cut into it with your scissors. But you're holding your fingers in the way, so there's no possible way for your scissors to reach the dog. You're not holding skin, you're only holding hair, and you're not cutting right down to the base of the mat. You're just cutting once into the end of the mat. Then you're going to come back with your brush, harshest brush you have, and that mat is going to be split and then you're going to continue with your brushing. So either this one, hold down a few strokes with this, then brush, or in with the scissor and then brush. Please feel free to contact me and ask questions about your dog's specific mats. If you want to send me a picture and say, Julia, should I demat this? And um, what is the best way to demat this area? I am totally happy to help. Be very, very careful with these tools. They are pointy and good luck. If your dog has a mat that's hanging off and you don't mind about your dog looking a bit choppy, what you can do is just hold the mat out and cut the tip of the mat right off. That's going to take off those dead ends that are tangled in and sometimes you can have success brushing a mat out even if you just take that the tip of the mat square off. You don't want to go down close to the skin at all, just the part that's hanging out and sometimes that's enough to release the hair and allow you to brush and comb through it. <laughs>